hi everybody now in this video we are going to talk about how do we make control chart on minitab I hope the uh, session the video on what control chart is what are its uses how to interpret has been useful now we are talking about how do we make control chart and how do we choose which control chart to make so see control chart for both continuous data and discrete data are different there are, there are certain control charts that we prefer in, in, in continuous data and there are certain control charts that we prefer in, in, in discrete data. So whenever your data is continuous you have many possible options but generally we, we choose uh, three options, three control charts. The very first control chart is individual moving range control chart we call that IMR chart second chart is x bar r or we we call that mean range and the last one is uh the last one chart is mean standard deviation chart or x bar s chart all right so if you see in in all these three uh, charts there is one thing common these the charts will show you two things first this this charts will show you uh your, whether your process is within control or not Secondly, the charts will show you whether variation within your process is, is, is under control or not. That's the reason uh, there are two control charts in each of these three categories. If you see individual moving range, this is combination of individual chart and moving range chart. If you look at uh, X bar R or, or mean range, so it is combination of both mean chart and range chart. And third one, if you see mean standard deviation chart, this is combination of mean chart and standard deviation chart. So when do we use individual moving range chart? When do we use mean range chart? And when do we use mean standard deviation chart? So see, whenever you wanna, uh, you want to make a control chart wherein you just have one subgroup, then you go with individual moving range chart. And as a matter of fact, we use individual moving range chart very frequently. And, and if you if you add up some categories, if if you add up some some levels uh, in your in your uh, data, when your subgroup size increases, then you can choose to go with either x bar r or x bar s. So you choose x bar r when you have uh, two to five subgroups, and you can choose x bar s when you have three or more than three subgroups generally more than three subgroups okay so now uh, if, if I compare both X bar R and X bar S so X bar chart in both the cases will be same yes the range chart and, and the standard deviation chart will be different okay now uh, l let's try to understand uh, how do we do this test so let me tell you individual moving range chart we'll do when we want to when, when we just have one subgroup let me show you on minitab how we do that so this is the data that I have in my minitab this data is of sales okay so you see here this is single subgroup this is my process if I want to find out whether my process is under control or not because I just have one subgroup what I'll do I would go with individual moving range chart but if uh, if I want to check performance of, of sales uh, shift wise and, and if, I, if I classify my data of sales according to shift such as data of sales in evening shift data of sales in morning shift data of, data of sales in night shift then I can go with either X bar R or X bar S. In this case, because I have three subgroup, so you can do either X bar R or X bar S. But we should prefer whenever, if it's possible to do X bar S, you should go ahead and, and, and you should do X bar S chart. Because standard deviation is the stronger measure of variation than, than range. And now uh, let's first do IMR chart okay individual moving range chart so let me show you what individual moving range chart does now a typical individual moving range chart will look like first let me show you how do we do this uh, the navigation part the navigate the navigation path for individual moving range chart would be go to stat in stat go to control chart in control chart go with variable chart charts for individual this is variable chart we are working on continuous data and I have single subgroup so individual moving range chart just select that now choose 
your your interest of data my interest of data is sales right now I will do okay so this is how uh, individual moving range chart will look like and you can you can see here you'll get two charts the first chart is individual value chart second chart is moving range chart now what is individual value and what is moving range let me show you that so this is the data that I had now I have pasted that data in Excel uh, to make the interpretation uh, simpler now see here this was the data of sales now let's go I'm sorry so what our control chart did was our control chart found out the average I mean the mean of all the sales data okay now we got this is the average right and once we got the average on the basis of average my my individual chart calculated control limits to calculate control limit you need mean and you need standard deviation okay so based on this my mini tab calculated control limits let me show you again see here my mean is 9 to 8 5 see here 9 to 8 5 is my mean right and what it did was it plotted these all data points these all data points are nothing I'm sorry but this data point that you can see see here the first data point is one I'm um, sorry 12,679 let's put a cursor here 12,679 similarly all the data points has been plotted this is how individual chart will plot the data in individual value control chart okay now the next chart just below uh, 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 individual chart you can see is called moving range chart now what is moving range chart let me show you here so in moving range chart we'll find out the difference of consecutive value how will this minus this this is how we got uh, difference of consecutive data points now again this minus this similarly will calculate uh, difference of consecutive values and wherever you see this negative sign please ignore that negative negative sign because we we here uh, uh, because we are concerned with the variation that is present in our process so we we, we don't take variation negative right negative uh, has no role to play in variation so this is how I got difference this is how I got moving range so what is moving range moving range is variation or the difference between the consecutive data points so in in some way moving range moving range is giving giving me idea of the variation of the consecutive data points now if you see here in mini tab this chart this moving range chart is essentially showing me whether the process of difference between individual uh, data points is under control or not so let me show you again you will calculate mean of all these values here this mean this mean is anyway not correct because uh, this while calculating uh, average what it has done is it must have subtracted these, these values which are in uh, which have negative sign before before it right so that is that is the way uh, this moving range chart will calculate its mean and on the basis of that it will calculate upper control limit and lower control limit and this will plot all these values all these values okay last value is 1400 let's go here and check here 1400 okay so this is how it, uh, this chart is plotted so I'm sure now you you have understood how this chart was made now let's understand how do we interpret these charts so the very ground rule is the very simple rule is whenever you want to study a process so first of all as a rule you will have to look at the variation control chart see we have two control chart first is control chart of process second is control chart of your variation variation of your process right so first we'll see whether variation of my process is under control or not if variation of my process is not under control I would not look uh, at the control chart uh, con control chart of my process so first this control chart has to pass if this control chart doesn't passes uh, I cannot go in and look at th this chart because uh, variation is the very basic feature uh, of, of any any process 
when variation is unpredictable then you cannot rely on your on, on your process chart and trust me the reason the reason we make this moving range chart is is because at times your your process chart at times your individual chart cannot identify some special cause variations so let me give you an example now let's say uh, we are making control chart on your earning on your salary how much did you earn i have data for last 12 months for your, for your earning and and i made a control chart on your earning so let's say you can see here lower control limit upper control limit suppose uh, i can see here the average uh, your, your average earning was 50000 your lower control limit was 10000 and your upper control limit was 110000 that means uh, 110000 now uh, what i found was there was a month wherein uh, you you uh, you got the salary of say 1 lakh uh, 1 lakh 9000 and very next month your salary uh, th there was a stiff fall in your salary and, and you just uh, you, you, you just received say 11,000 see the stiff fall right from 1 lakh 10,000 to 11,000 and still it has not exceeded this control limit that means still we cannot call that as we cannot call that a special cause variation so this process chart cannot detect any such sharp rise or, or say sharp fall in, 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 that is present in our process if I make in, if I make moving range chart, this chart will easily identify such such a special cause variation. And you can see here there will be one red dot saying this is a special cause variation. Okay, so this is why we make moving range chart, or or e even in X bar R or X bar S chart, you can see uh, there there you can see a range chart and, and and standard deviation chart. That is nothing but that gives us idea of the variation. All right, so I'm sure now you know uh, the the basics behind these control charts. Now let's go to stat again. Let's go to control chart. Let's go to uh, individual moving range chart. And and you can select your your uh, your column of interest and then go to this IMR options. Okay, in IMR option you can go to test. Now you remember I I showed you eight test in in previous video. Eight test for. Uh, for a special cause uh, identification so see here those are these are the eight tests now uh, most of the times you will just uh, you'll just try to find out uh, this logic this is special cause variation one points greater than k standard deviation from the center line but if you see if, if you found that your process is is good enough and say you you didn't find any any special cause variation no data point is going above and below plus minus three standard deviation from the mean now in that case you would like to opt stringent measure now you would like to check whether there is any special pattern within that control limits or not so if you want to check any such special pattern within those uh, those special um, sorry within those control limits then select this all okay and you can select one by one if you want to check uh, 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 what is the factor that is present there if you if, if you want to know whether the oscillation is present or not so just choose oscillation okay okay no oscillation is present if oscillation would have been present you would have seen here a red dot let me again show you go to IMR option test now I selected trend and I selected one more option see here no special cause variation no special pattern now let's go to test and add two more condition okay see here oh my god good news now let's go and then select all the condition unfortunately the data that I have seems to be under statistical control bad luck so I cannot show you any special cause variation in this data because there is no special cause variation okay but ideally if, if, if there would have been any special cause variation you would see suppose this is special cause variation so you would see this data point would be just above this red line and the color of this uh, data point would be red and if you if you put your cursor here so it would give it would give you idea observation 55 uh, and and this is the value so if you want to find out observation 55 go here 
go here and find out observation 55 observation 55 I'm sorry so this was the value now find out uh, whose performance uh, that data point is right find out that team leader find, find out that supervisor if that's a special cause variation find out the reason why that a special cause variation came and 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 and, and treat that a special cause variation accordingly okay so I'm sure uh, this this video on IMR chart was useful in case if you have any question concern do write to me thank you